Welcome Whiskey Saberers, this is Mark from Whiskey Whistle bringing you Whiskey Review number 45. If you're tuning in for the first time today, I sure do hope you enjoy it. And uh, if you are a subscriber, uh, well, thank you very much for coming back again and again. And uh, for the new viewers, I hope you'll like it so much that you will subscribe. So let's find out about that, okay? Uh, today we're going to be looking at Glen Grant. And, um, well, before I really get into too much talking, I'm going to go right ahead and get that poured, okay? I've got my trusty Glen Cairn glass at the ready. And uh, this lovely uh, single malt Glen Grant 16-year-old that we're going to be looking at, okay? So, uh, not quite a young whiskey, not quite an old, but somewhere in the middle, okay? So, I guess I'll better get the, the cork off. There we are. And, um, well, we're going to pour a fairly healthy, uh, fairly healthy pour or a fairly healthy dram, wherever you're from. And there it is. Oh, yes, that's roughly, I would say, pushing 40 milliliters. Catch that drip. And we'll set the bottle back there. Now, um, one thing I find with uh, Glenn Grant, and specifically the 16-year-old, uh, is that you really need some time with it. Don't rush it. Don't just get into uh, uh, the nosing and tasting. Uh, don't just dive into your glass, okay? So we're going to let that sit for a little while, okay? And, um, well, uh, in the meantime, let's have a little look at the bottle. I brought that one close uh, the first time there. So let me just read the front of the label here. Uh, Glen Grant, Rotha's Speyside, uh, single malt scotch whiskey, and it says here right on the front, Seduct seductively smooth, fruity, and rich. Established 1840. Uh, and more tasting notes, intense ripe orchard fruits, lingering finish. And this is 43% alcohol by volume ABV, okay? So a little bit more than the basic 40%, which, which is fantastic. Um, okay, and uh, on the back here, we'll just have a quick look at that one. James Grant, the major, was only 25 when he, he inherited the Glen Grant Distillery in Rotha's Speyside. A forward-thinking and unconventional man, the major personally designed uh, the innovative tall slender stills with unique purifiers to achieve his vision of a seductively smooth, fruity, rich, superior single malt. Glen Grant, 16-year-old, displays a deep golden color with an intense bouquet of ripe orchard fruits. This superb single malt offers an intense, sweet, and smooth palate with a fresh, long, lingering finish. Distilled and bottled in Scotland, as it must be. Um... Okay, now, um, Glen Grant, in fact, uh, one of the largest uh, volume selling single malts uh, in the world. Uh, I believe the last time I looked at uh, numbers, uh, I think it might have been number four or, or thereabouts. Um, I've tried to look for that uh, uh, today, in fact, and I just can't find any... Um, sort of up-to-date information on that. Uh, so, but anyway, uh, definitely a top 10 uh, volume selling uh, single malt. Um, uh, and uh, apparently the biggest selling single malt in Italy, uh, which is interesting. And it looks as though Italians do like their single malt. Um, so, I think it's roughly about time to, to start uh, nosing and tasting this. All right, uh, I'm just gonna give that one more minute. The first time I came across Glen Grant, uh, in fact, was uh, uh, aboard an aircraft. I was on my way uh, here to Korea uh, from, uh, from Canada, and that would have been a little over a year ago, in fact, and uh, I was flying, I believe, on, on Korean, was it Korean Air? I think it might have been Korean Air. Um, one of the two Korean airlines, anyway. 
and um, you know uh, they have a really lovely in-flight service with actually on, actual onboard duty-free as many airlines do and they had quite a good selection of, uh, of single malts uh, so surprisingly this was uh, $50 US which I was very very shocked about um, so I, I bought two I bit the bullet uh, I declared my two bottles, and thankfully the uh, the border customs official uh, he just waved me through. Uh, so that was uh, that was nice. I was prepared prepared to pay a little bit of duty, uh, and uh, well, I uh, I don't want to say I got off uh, because he he let me through. So I was uh, granted uh, amnesty from paying uh, duty duty taxes. So uh, anyway, so that was great, and. Uh, this was long before I ever thought I would be uh, sitting here in front of you doing whiskey reviews and I probably polished off those two bottles uh, within a couple of months and I really did enjoy them. In fact, I enjoyed them so much uh, that I then got uh, a bottle of the 10 year old to give as a gift uh, and uh, the recipient of said gift quite enjoyed it. Uh, and to further the story with uh, Glenn Grant and me, uh, here in Korea, uh, the biggest volume supermarket uh, is called E-Mart. And uh, well, at E-Mart, one day I walked by and lo and behold, uh, there sat Glenn Grant in the form of uh, the Major's Reserve. And uh, this one is, well, it was uh, the most inexpensive single malt available uh, here in Korea. I think I, I paid 35,000 uh, won. So that's about $30 US, give or take. Maybe a little bit, little bit less than that. Um, outstanding value. I've noticed the prices come up a little bit, but it's still quite affordable. Uh, so if you're in Korea and you're looking for a very, very nice basic single malt to get started, uh, Glen Grant is a great place to begin. Okay, so let's get into that. And before we know that, there will be a short advertisement and that will be coming right now. Okay, hopefully that wasn't uh, too frustrating to watch that. Don't forget, you can always skip the ads by just uh, clicking on skip ad. Uh, okay, all right, so let's uh, let's get into that, shall we? Now, I don't want to say that I've been framed by reading the tasting notes and I've got tasting notes of my own that uh, that I wrote without looking at the bottle or the box, uh, but you really do um, get an orchard fruit note there and uh, interestingly enough, I find it's apricots and not so much um, uh, the ones after you've, you've cut them and, and pitted them but rather uh, you've picked them and the smell of ripe orchard fruits as you pick them. Or which you might smell as you're walking by a supermarket in the summertime uh, during peak apricot season. It's quite nice. And um, and you'll find over time there will be a, a caramel note that begins to build. And they're using quite nice uh, bourbon oak, uh, sorry, oak, uh, bourbon, ex bourbon oak casks uh, for this, which, um, you know, adds that oaky, kind of subtle vanilla note. But I'm, I'm saying this is more of a, a caramel than a vanilla. And uh, other notes that I picked up uh, uh, over the research that I've done. So apricots is a bit of nuttiness, uh, like a raw almond. Caramel, I said caramel, and I wrote here lemon caramel. So a little bit on the sour side. And um, uh, if you wait long enough, you will, you will be treated to some strawberry candy. And uh, something that I wrote here that just just hit me, which was uh, wax lips. Candy wax lips. Now, if you're not familiar with that, 
if you're, I think if you're Canadian or American, I'm not sure if that was available in, in the UK or el elsewhere, but when I was young, one of the, the cool things they had at the convenience store uh, was a kind of a candy that was made of wax and sugar, of course, and they were red wax lips. And you would, you would, it had a little mouthpiece, so you'd stick it in your mouth and you'd have these ridiculous looking uh, red lips on you. And then you'd be able to, to chew it. And it would chew like gum, like a waxy gum. Uh, and then eventually you'd, you'd spit it out once the flavor had gone. Uh, anyway, and <clears throat> pardon me, some grass, a little bit of grass, fresh grass and uh, sage. Okay, so that's what I had picked up uh, during my research. And, um, you know, right now, since it's only been about, oh, I don't know, five, six minutes so far, uh, I'm still noticing it's mainly the apricot and a bit of caramel that I'm noticing. So like I say, give this time um, uh, in the glass, take your time with it, and I think you will really be, uh, be pleased. Okay. <clears throat> Set that there. Okay, well, we're going to have a, a taste now. Oh, color-wise, by we didn't talk about the color. Uh, you'll notice that it's got a, a, a kind of a smoky green uh, bottle, which is uh, great. Why is that great? It's great because it means they don't have to put very much color uh, into the whiskey. And I don't know if you can see that against the, uh, the background of uh, my living room, but uh, it's actually quite a light, um, maybe just a tad darker than like a lemon yellow. And likely that's natural. Uh, it doesn't tell me so on the label, uh, but um, I would hope so, and it likely is. And 43%, by the way, uh, there is likely a little bit of um, light chill filtration that's gone on there. But again, uh, this is the standard range uh, from one of the, the biggest uh, single malt brands in the world. And... Um, well, I believe all, pretty much all of them in the top uh, 10 start out with 40% ABV uh, with uh, possibly a touch of color and a chill filtration because a lot of consumers uh, will drink that with ice in the glass. Okay, And this would certainly be interesting on ice if you like that kind of uh, uh, cool effect with your whiskey. Okay, so let's taste it now. Cheers, everyone. It's very, very nice. <clears throat> it begins sweet. Then you get a bit of uh, dryness and, and a slight bit of bitterness that comes through, but again, in a pleasant way. And, uh, <clears throat> and then it, it begins to get a little bit of sourness coming through as well. So it really runs the range of, of flavors in your mouth. Uh, there's even just a, a, just a touch of pepperiness in there too. Uh, and again, in, in, a, in a pleasant way. Um, you know, imagine what uh, a, a dash of, a little dash of pepper uh, in a bowl of uh, um, Jell-O brand uh, caramel pudding would be like. Anyway. Um, and uh, the, the fruits are still there. Apricots, uh, oranges, uh, I've written down here. A uh, touch of nuttiness. I've written astringent mouthfeel. So uh, you keep that in your mouth and it, it, it's a little bit puckery. So you're puckering from, uh, from uh, the, uh, the, the, the bitterness and from the tannins uh, from that fresh ex-bourbon oak barrel that I'm sure they're using. Uh, and uh, if you can hang on to that in your mouth long enough. Now I know for some people... Uh, if, you're, if you just start drinking um, uh, whiskey or other uh, distilled liquor that's 40% or more, it's not that easy to hold in your mouth for very long because it, it begins to get a bit of um, that alcohol burn. Uh, 
but the, the thing is you've got to try to take the smallest amount possible okay so um, do not drink that like wine uh, take it you know it's kind of funny but take it like bad medicine um, if you had to take bad medicine and it was really really bad I mean I guess some people may just um, plug their nose and uh, get it down other people may just very slowly sit through that teaspoonful uh, to get to get through it anyway so uh, or more like hot soup maybe extremely hot soup um, you're going to take a very very small amount in your mouth so you don't burn yourself uh, so try to do the same with with your whiskey um, And let it get all over your tongue, all over your mouth. <clears throat> that will definitely benefit uh, noticing and being able to experience uh, the aftertaste or the finish. Okay? So it's stringent mouthfeel. And if you hang on to it long enough in your mouth, you will get some nice vanilla uh, that comes through, as well as a leathery note. Uh, leather is something that seems to peek through when you get into older uh, ages and this is again it's not that old but uh, it's, I guess the beginning of a middle age um, and uh, lychee or lychee or however you pronounce that and uh, for the finish I've written that it's dry a little bit peppery apricot kernels um, so again that's you know, a little bit almondine esque and uh, ripe gooseberry uh, or gooseberries. Uh, gooseberries, uh, we used to grow in the backyard um, uh, in Winnipeg when I was growing up in the first house that my family lived in. Um, sometimes, sometimes I go by that house in the summertime hoping that whoever's living there has kept up that gooseberry bush because uh, it sure did um, uh, produce a lot of fruit. So anyway, I'm going to try one more of that. And on the topic of uh, chill filtration, uh, as I've no mentioned many times before, uh, you'll notice that uh, there's a lot of um, beads of whiskey hanging about uh, on the upper edges of, of, the, of the glass. And uh, well, that would tell me that there's probably not a whole lot of uh, chill filtration that's gone on. Uh, so it has not been, you know, stripped of everything. Um, so probably a light chill filtration has occurred. Anyway. <clears throat> now this is a non-peated style of whiskey. But, um, you know, you get the, the occasional waft of, um, of a wood smoke coming through there, which is quite nice. And um, a lot of time has passed now. And it is really getting sweeter and sweeter. And um, there's a strawberry jam uh, note coming through here now, which is absolutely lovely. Wonderful. Okay, well, it's time to add a little bit of water. I've still got, well, probably more than 30 milliliters there. So we're going to add in a good teaspoonful. <clears throat> there we go. And um, we will let that mix up a little bit. Word of caution, after you've added a bit of water, and you stick your nose in it, you may find that some of the volatile uh, alcohols uh, are released suddenly and uh, it may be off-putting, you know, so put your water in there and, uh, and, you know, let that sit for a little while. Okay. 
And while we're letting that um, uh, do its thing, we're going to talk a little bit about uh, Glen Grant, uh, the distillery itself. Okay. Um, <clears throat> so uh, this distillery was founded in 1840 in Rothes, Speyside. So Glen Grant is a space cider. It's a space side whiskey. Uh, it was founded by two former illegal distillers, uh, John and James Grant. Uh, and uh, well, they they went legal. Uh, obviously, eighteen well, sometime after eighteen forty, they they went legal, or in eighteen forty. Uh, and eighteen seventy two, uh, by by that time, both of them had died. And there, uh, the son, uh, one of the sons, uh, James Grant, known as the Major James, the Major Grant, took over, and it turns well. It turns out that he is responsible for, I guess, uh, what the 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 current sort of expression of Glen Grant, how that how that has evolved. He's he is very largely responsible for that. Uh, for the the tall uh, slender skills that are uh, skills the tall slender stills that are used that you can see right there uh, with purifiers um, uh, and um, anyway uh, and this has has been part and parcel of the uh, uh, well, what am I trying to say here uh, making this whiskey uh, very light and very smooth. Um, very fruity so that's how that uh, kind of came about um, purifiers uh, on the stills uh, there are some uh, purifiers and I don't know exactly how these work uh, but um, uh, one would imagine that uh, you know as as the vapors are rising uh, you can see that the, the purifier is perched somewhere up up on the the upper parts of, of the uh, uh, the still before it hits the line arm and where it, where it begins its cooling process uh, and I would suppose that the purifier uh, would remove some of the the heavier uh, the heavier sort of elements the heavier chemicals uh, that that are released during the boiling of uh, of uh, uh, the wort the mash uh, the fermented um, uh, the beer. Uh, okay, anyway, <clears throat> not a distiller, don't know everything, soon to be, possibly, <laughs> uh, you'll find out about that at some point. Um, okay, so it uh, looks as though the Major, uh, James the Major Grant, ran that distillery from 1872 up until, well, sometime close to 1931 when he died. At that point, his son-in-law, Douglas uh, McKessick, McKessick uh, took over. And um, uh, after that, I don't know much about how that exchange hands, but fast forward to 1972, and there is a link here with Glenn Livett. Uh, so Glenn Grant, Glenn Livett, uh, and others uh, amalgamated to form uh, Glenn Livett Distillers Limited, uh, which then uh, became under the Chivas Brothers umbrella, uh, and then Pernod Ricard. Uh, anyway, um, finally, December 2006, this is where the Italian connection comes in, when Grupo, Ca uh, Grupo Campari uh, took over. Uh, they bought the distillery, and um, that's likely why it's number one in Italy. Uh, I'm sure they've done... Uh, Hordes and hordes of promotion and marketing uh, in their home turf to get Glen Grant up to uh, the first position. Okay, and if you're watching uh, uh, the little pictures I've got rolling through, um, that'll be a little while. So, well, anyway, uh, you will see none other than uh, Dennis Malcolm. He'll be coming around soon. Uh, he is uh, the distillery manager and I believe also the master distiller uh, who is responsible for, um, well, how these uh, particular whiskeys taste uh, and in choosing the casks that go in and um, blending the ages together and so on. 
That should be him right about now. There he is. Okay, so there's Dennis Malcolm. And there's another picture of him next here, a little bit bigger, I think. Uh, yes, there he is. Uh, at a presentation of a very special uh, fine uh, whiskey. 50-year-old Glenn Grant. Uh, so uh, he has been with uh, the company now for 50 years plus. He started at 15, apparently, uh, in the cooperage where they make the, uh, the casks and where they uh, repair them and, and so on and so forth. Anyway, interesting tidbit. Uh, okay, so let's try that with a little bit of water. And uh, as you may guess, before that, there will be a short advertisement right now. Okay, so let's try nosing that with the water now. And if I look at it now, it's been completely mixed through and through. So we can definitely enjoy uh, this flavor with water to its best. And um, as always seems to happen, it just really brings out the sweetness. So caramel, strawberry jam, a little bit less of the apricot notes. Hmm, wonderful. Anything else I found earlier? And again, you may have to spend a long, long time with that, but I wrote here, uh, fresh tobacco. Tobacco, again, is another another kind of a, a compound, a, a note, uh, an essence. Now, you know, I mean, something reminiscent of tobacco seems to uh, come through more with older, uh, older aged whiskeys. Okay, anyway, we'll try that one. Uh, Cheers to Dennis, Mr. Dennis Malcolm. Thank you very much for your excellent work uh, with Glenn Grant. I really enjoy all of your products, at least the three that I've tried. <laughs> okay, cheers, everybody. Hmm. And it seems to really just go from um, <clears throat> a nice sweetness and then a touch of sourness in there. You know, very much like very ripe strawberries. And I'm tasting more strawberries now than before. Hmm. More caramel as well. Um, <clears throat> yeah, a little bit less orchard fruitiness. And I've written here and circled ripe jam, strawberry jam, and um, more leather. Although I'm not getting as much leather now as I did earlier today, sadly. Maybe I'd have to wait a little bit longer. Um, and uh, that tobacco note, you know, when you're finished, when you're getting close to finishing uh, your glass, give the glass a smell. See, actually, now I can start picking up a little bit of that that fresh tobacco note. Hmm. Interesting. Uh, and finish-wise, um, a little bit extra vanilla. Uh, there's still a hint of dryness. And I wrote here, trails out in an oaky, vanilla, uh, dry, sort of a desert path, desert trail off into the, uh, the dunes. Hmm. There's still a bit of gooseberry as well. And something, again, something reminiscent of lychee. Um, <clears throat> anyway, very well made. 
uh, very lovely to sip and drink. This is something that I think you could share with pretty much anyone uh, and they would really enjoy the experience. Um, so uh, as a space side, uh, it's definitely of the classic space side variety. Um, big on the fruit, bit of vanilla, uh, not much peat to speak of. Um, and, um, you know, the, the sweetness is the, uh, the, the, the character that's being pushed uh, more so than uh, bitter flavors or sour flavors. Okay. Okay, so let's uh, just go over what I've written here for the overall. I wrote here, starts off somewhat plainly, but time and water are truly rewarding. Excuse me. Easy to drink and affordable for a 16 year old. Excuse me. Uh, there's a lovely strawberry fruitiness uh, with, excuse me, growing, oh boy. <clears throat> a lovely strawberry fruitiness with growing complexity uh, as time passes. Okay. So uh, the Whiskey Whistle Whiskey Score for Glenn Grant, 16 year old, 43% ABV is going to be. 83 out of 100. So 83 points out of 100 for Glenn Grant, 16 year old, single malt scotch whiskey. Okay. Well, um, I don't think I have anything uh, much of it, uh, anything else to, to talk about so much. Uh, I'll be getting back to my regular work next week. Uh, so there could be maybe a little bit, a little bit less frequent videos. I've been doing about two a week now for the last little while. Uh, so there may only be one a week, which will likely be released uh, midweek, probably on a, a Tuesday or Wednesday, depending on where you are in the world. Okay, uh, I'll do my best to try to keep up uh, with two a week as, um, uh, well, it seems to be uh, there is enough demand for that. Uh, but there may be some weeks that I'll have to, uh, you know, get to work uh, and uh, take, care of, uh, take care of businesses, so to speak. Uh, okay, so uh, again, thank you very much uh, for tuning in. If, if you have watched up to this point, uh, please, please do subscribe and uh, leave a comment if you've tried Glen Grant uh, or if you have been compelled uh, to seek it out uh, and, uh, you know, share it, uh, share it with your friends. If you've got friends who are interested in whiskey, uh, pop them the link and uh, that would be a big help for me and uh, possibly uh, help for your friend to introduce, introduce them to something, uh, something new, uh, something that's not, uh, not on the tip of everybody's tongue as far as single malt uh, scotch whiskey goes, okay? All right, so that's it for, for me here uh, at Whiskey Whistle. Again, my name is Mark. Take care and come back again soon.